says, yes, Florida, TGIF. And we're cheered up because the work week is over and our weekend is about to begin. Yay! <laughs> I am employed and I am grateful. But when the work week is done, I'm more grateful because I can live for the next two days with a different focus. One of our members, Tanisha, used to say, I love this phrase, she said, I picked enough cotton this week. <laughs> now my focus can be on those things that are close to my heart. We're in a series on the Ten Commandments, and these are the values that God wants us to live by. Why? Because they bring balance to our lives and also to our families. Today we're going to look at the Fourth Commandment which is God saying in Exodus 20, 8 through 9, observe the Sabbath and keep it holy. You have six days in which to do your work, but the seventh day is a day of rest dedicated to me. On that day, no one is to work. So the fourth commandment is very clear. It says, have a dedicated time of rest. Again, Sabbath means day of rest. God says every seventh day you are to take a day of rest. Mark 2, 27, Jesus says the Sabbath was made to benefit man and not man to benefit the Sabbath. God says, living word, I want you to rest. Why do we need to rest? It's because our batteries get run down. Physically, emotionally, spiritually, we need to recharge. And when we rest and do things that restore us, we're preventing fatigue and depression. All of us live in a stress-filled world. And if we don't regularly take rest stops, distress will affect us and also those who we live with and those we love. Essentially, it doesn't matter when you take a Sabbath. What's important is that you do it at least once a week. If you want to combat burnout, fatigue, and depression, you've got to obey the fourth command. Set aside specific days every week for rest, recreation, and restoration. And remember that part of restoration is reconnecting with God through worship and also reconnecting with your family through fellowship. The Word of God says again, keep the Sabbath holy. So how do I keep it holy? Well, remember, holy means set it apart to make it different from your work week. Holy rest means to change your pace of living, to change what and who you focus on. God intends for us to rest. That is to intentionally recharge, reconnect, and refocus. There are three things that I want to focus on today in terms of rest. And I want you to ask yourself throughout the sermon, what does God want me to rest from? There are three things I want you to consider when we talk about rest. Number one, rest your body. Yes, yes. Number two, rest your emotions. Specifically, rest from fear, worry, and anxiety. Oh, and number three, rest in him. Amen. Amen. Number one, do I need to rest my body? God says, rest your body. Psalm 127, 2 says, God wants his loved ones to get their proper rest. This is so important 
that God used himself as an example. When he created the world, he took six days to create it, and then on the seventh, he Amen. Now, God does not get tired, but he wanted to set an example. He was modeling something, an important principle. Take time off to rest your body. Ecclesiastes 10.15 says, Only someone too stupid to find his way home would wear himself out with work. So when you go home, be at home. That's not a continuation of your busyness. Be fully present to yourself and to your loved ones. An old Indian parable says, you break the vow if it's always bent. Psalm 23 says, the Lord is my shepherd. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. Amen. Has God ever had to make you lie down because you wouldn't do it on your own? If you never take any days off, never observe the fourth commandment, there's likely a chance you'll end up observing it in the hospital. Mm. And if you say, when I relax, I feel guilty, you don't need to feel guilty. Even Jesus relaxed. Even he said, I need to get away. And nobody accomplished more in ministry than he did in the three and a half years. Even Jesus took time away. So who are you? An unwillingness to take a day off and say, the world's going to fall apart if I don't take care of it. I'm holding up the world. But God says, relax your grip. He's got the whole world in his hands. So he wants you to regularly take a physical sack. That means including time for quietness and physically restoring your body. Psalm 23 3 says again, he leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. Turn the TV off. Turn the computer off. Turn the tablet off. Turn the cell phone off. Turn, the, turn all electronics. Anything that charges. Turn it off. Ah, have some moments in the week when you are not plugged into anything. When nothing is beeping, honking, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> Quiet. Quiet. God says, be still and know that I am God. Do you know that God he whispers to you in the quiet. Yes. Yes. There are some things you have been looking for God to say to you. And you know what he's saying to you? Turn it all off so you can hear me. Amen. I recently um, was upset with someone in my family because I didn't think that they made a good decision. And God worked it all out, but you know, even when God works things out, you're still upset. You hold on to stuff, and I was holding on to stuff even though God worked it out. And he told me what I'm telling you. He said, get alone with me, because I need you to hear me. And in those quiet moments, I turned off the TV, I turned off the cell phone, I turned off the computer, and I said, Lord, speak to me, because I'm not at peace. And he spoke to me. And you know how he spoke to me? I was upset with my sister-in-law. He showed me my brother's face. My brother passed away, as you all know. And he showed me my brother's face and his children. And he said, what's more important? Do you see your brother's smile, your brother's laugh, your brother's eyes? Are you going to hold on to something that can be an obstacle? 
between you and your sister-in-law and not have that quality relationship that you want with your brother's children. So he got in my face in that quiet time. And he said, let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. And trust me. Trust me for your mother. Trust me for your family. You've been crying out for your family. You have to model. You have to set the example of restoration. We need to get quiet. But sometimes we spend so much telling God what we want that we don't hear what God is trying to tell us what he wants. One of the important things about rest is that in order for you to give to your relationship, to give to other people, you have to come out of place of being charged up. If you're coming to them empty, you're just going to drain them. And you're going to be irritated by them. But you ain't got nothing to give. So don't come to people empty. Get your rest so that you can restore your relationships. It is so important that we dedicate time to restoration so that we can dedicate time to relationships. So chill out, so that you can relax with your family and friends. You're not wasting time by taking time for you. You're actually creating time and space in your heart, in your life, in your schedule for other people. Hallelujah. Because God wants you to connect to your family. And you don't want to be bothered when you're drained. But when you're filled and God fills you with his strength and his grace and his love and his peace and his patience, you know you have time for people. And God wants you to have time for people because you are all in I want to talk to you about the importance of people in your world and why you need to recharge so that you can relate. These are some of the quotes that God gave me about what was really important. I could hold on, and you guys can hold on to the things that irritate you about the people in your world, but this is what God said. I want you to hold on to. He said, the most important thing in the world is not our jobs, but our family and love. He said, peace is found in the smile of a child, the love of a mother, the joy of a father, and in the togetherness of a family. He said, never lose sight of the fact that the world judges you on how you treat your family. A good quality life is finding a good balance between work, family, and friends. Nothing is better than going home to family, eating good food, and relaxing with them. And Michael J. Fox said, family is not an important thing, it's everything. And Barbara Bush, the former first lady, said, to us, family is putting our arms around each other and being there. No marriage or family will ever reach its full potential unless everyone in it works together in unity of purpose, respecting one another and relying on each other's strength. Your family needs to be appreciated even when they are driving you crazy. As much as they make you mad, annoy you, interrupt you, even curse at you, try to control you, these are the people who know you best and will stand by you even when you're being a hot mess. And your family will expose both your strength and your weakness. And we go through life wondering, what's it all about? 
But at the end of our lives, we find out it's all about them. Call it a clan, a network, a tribe, or a family, whatever it is, you need one. And when you go around your family and you're empty, that's when the stress starts to happen. That's when you're focusing on all the wrong things because you're aggravated and you're irritated and you're stressed. So you go around them, you don't have nothing to give them. They just add into your aggravation. But go around them full, full of God, full of worship, full of hope, full of encouragement, full of grace, full of kindness. Go around them full, meaning get recharged. So then when you go around them, you're so full, they'll be like, it's wonderful having you around. Because now you got a lot of goodness and kindness and joy to give them. Because you've been restored. You know what children and spouses remember? It's not so much the gifts you give them, it's the time you spend with them. And you can't have quality time with time without quality time with God. So when the weekend comes and work is no longer your focus, after you've rested and recharged, spend time reconnecting with your significant relationships. You see, you can be perfect as long as you stay to yourself. Everybody thinks they're perfect as long as they stay by themselves. Because nothing to Nothing is rubbing you. So you come before everybody saying, I have no problems. Yeah, well, get around your family. And they'll show you your strengths and your weaknesses. And those are things you can then bring to God and say, Lord, help me with this. So what do you need to take? Do you need to rest your body? Secondly, Let's take a rest from our emotions. Rest from fear and worry and anxiety. In Matthew 11, it says, come, Jesus says, come to me, all you who are weary and overburdened, and I will give you rest. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So if you're carrying a lot of fear and worry and anxiety, God doesn't want you to carry that. You are trying to be God. Let God be God and you be you. Life's going to be a whole lot easier. You need to rest from fear and worry and anxiety. If you're focusing on what if this happens and what if that happens, what if I run out of money, what if the report is bad, what if I don't get the job, what if, what if the promotion does, what if they don't like me, what if I can't find something affordable. What if, what if, what if, what if, what if, what if? These are all signs that you're not trusting enough in God. You're not resting in God. You need to put your emotions at rest because when you do, that is a sign of trust. That is you saying, I am going to be still before the Lord and wait patiently for Him. So I call my emotions to come to a rest. The Bible means it when it says, don't be anxious for anything, nothing. If your mind is racing with worry, ask for God's grace to help you rest in the Lord. Hush your fears, be silent before the Lord. Wait patiently for him to work those things out.
supervisor is very moody, very difficult to please. At times, I felt like I was in a bowling alley with bowls just coming at me. All I could do really was just curl up in a ball sometimes. I recently met with my current supervisor to be giving my probation review. And I remember uh, texting Pastor Benny and the elders and asking them to pray. Because based on what my eyes had seen and my experiences with this very difficult person, I didn't know what the outcome was going to be. But I did know this. I wasn't alone. And that's the difference in having a relationship with God and not having one. You're never alone. Jesus said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. Amen. So I asked Jesus, Lord, please help me. I didn't get the answer that I wanted. My supervisor said, yeah, you've mastered some things over here, but I still don't know that you're a good fit. We're going to extend your probation three more months. And I said, Lord, after I came out of that meeting, I said, Lord, this isn't fair. It's not right. And I asked God, I actually said something else, and I don't know if I should say it. <laughs> <laughs> I said, Lord, this sucks. <laughs> But I didn't have the inclination to flee. You know how there's a fight? I didn't have the inclination to fight, and I didn't have the inclination to flee. I felt peace. Even though I felt this sucks, I still felt peace. The peace that God was going to take care of. Amen. There's a song, an old gospel song, where we, we say, the, um, it goes, Jesus fixed it. Amen. And it actually, it says, Jesus fixed me. And that's what Jesus did. He fixed me. He fixed my attitude. Hallelujah. Because I didn't want to fight. And I didn't want to flee. You know how to go on the computer and send out a million resumes and you know, <laughs> I didn't feel any of that. But I did feel that God was going to take care of me. So I said, Jesus, fix it. Fix me. And I love, you know how I love my poems. There's this song that goes, fix me, Jesus, fix me. Fix me for my home on high. Fix me for the by and by. Fix me for my starry crown. Fix me for a higher ground. Fix me, Jesus. Fix me. So again, we're talking about rest. Don't let the enemy stir up attitude and fear and flight and fight. Tell Jesus, Lord, fix me. Whatever they feel that they need to see, fix me and get my attitude out of the way. It says, well, they ain't doing that to nobody else. Fix me, Jesus, because you put me in this situation. All of you, you are in a situation where you don't have total control over it. And you have to comply with what other people are telling you to do. And yes, they could make it easier. Yes, it could be different, but it isn't different for you. And God is allowing that. So fix your attitude by asking the Lord to fix you so that you can go through whatever God is asking you to go through for his purposes. And one other thing we want you to understand here and that he wanted me to understand is my job is not my peace. My job is not my peace. 
So this thing that always seems to be sort of out of, out of your reach, out of your control, this thing that never seems to solve itself or, or resolve itself or whatever, it's because God is saying, don't find your peace in that thing or in that person or in that situation being resolved. Your peace is not in the thing or the person or the situation being resolved. Your peace is in your relationship with Jesus. What time is it? Okay. So rest has come over me. I am resting in the Lord. That means I am trusting in Him. That leads me to the third thing I want to ask you. Are you resting? Are you resting in your salvation? We get strength when we rest bodies. We get peace when we rest our minds. But when we rest in our salvation, we get courage. Courage to face the day. Courage to face the future. Courage to endure whatever is being asked, us, asked of us to do. Courage for your sorrows and hope for your tomorrow. God wants you to rest. That means trust Him. There are things you're still trying to hold on to, things you're still trying to make it happen, still to, things you're still trying to control. And God is saying, let me be God. I'm not saying no. I may not be saying yes. I'm saying trust me. Rest in me. Let me bring that to pass according to my divine plan and my divine will. Rest and take my courage, take my strength, take my patience, take my peace while you are resting. But you need to have a relationship with me. Because you can't rest in my salvation unless you are resting in your relationship with me. So that means worship me. Make me your focus. Say, Lord, if it be your will, not my will. Say, Lord, feel me so that I don't walk around empty looking for other things to fill me. And Lord, I'm going to position myself so that I can find joy first in you. I'm going to worship you. I'm going to pray to you. I'm going to read about you. I'm going to listen to the word. I'm going to focus on you. I'm going to put my hope in you. And I'm going to praise you for your presence. Praise you for your power. Praise you for your promises. Praise you for your provision. And praise you for your protection. So what do you need to rest in? Do you need to rest your body? Do you need to rest from fear and worry and anxiety? Do you need to come to people full of God? And do you need to rest in your salvation, reconnecting to God? By doing these things, you will keep the fourth commandment and have strength throughout your day. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. amen.